Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Superhero Origins. This time on the channel, we'll be talking about the psychic telekinetic Wonder Woman, Elizabeth Braddock, also known as Psylocke. A woman born with a talent that has been hidden inside her for quite a few years, she does end up developing her powers and becomes quite a powerful hero in the Marvel Universe. Although she isn't spoken about as much as the other psychics, Betsy does have a pretty interesting story arc and origin. So, without any further ado, let's dive into the world of Psylocke. Actually, before we get into our explanation, we have just a very small request. If you like our content, Content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks! Now, let's begin. A Brief History of Elizabeth Braddock also known as Psylocke. Elizabeth Braddock is a telepathic mutant from Britain who has been a part of the X-Men as well as a champion of Otherworld. She was called Psylocke in the X-Men and Captain Britain in the Otherworld. Originally, her twin brother was Captain Britain, while at the same time Betsy started showing telepathic and telekinetic prowess. At a time when she was working with the Psy Division of Strike as a secret agent, she crossed paths with her superhero brother. She aided him in many of his problems as Captain Britain and eventually took over the mantle herself. When Slaymaster blinded her, she stepped down from the role as Captain Britain. However, she was later trapped and had her eyesight restored by Spiral and Mojo. Soon after, she was rescued by the X-Men and the New Mutants, eventually joining the X-Men as Psylocke. While being a part of the X-Men, she was part of a lot of crazy adventures. Once, she had her body exchanged with Quanon, the assassin ninja. When Wolverine showed up and freed her from this predicament, she went back to the X-Men. However, she had to deal with the experience of being trapped in another person's body. For quite a few years after that, she remained a loyal member of the X-Men. She worked with many different teams and ended up giving her life when a villain named Vargas killed her. Having been brought back to life by her elder brother Jamie, she rejoined the X-Men and went on even more adventures with such groups like the Exiles, who worked on a multiversal level, and the Lethal Mutant Squad, X-Force. The issue she was dealing with due to the body switching seemed to have been resolved after Braddock was killed by Sapphire Styx because she managed to recover in her own body. Shortly after this, Professor Charles Xavier invited all the mutants of the world to come and settle in Krakoa. Upon reaching there, she gave up the name Psylocke and began working with Apocalypse in an attempt to revive the mutant known as Excalibur. Because of this, Betsy took over her previous role as Captain Britain before becoming the leader of the Captain Britain Corps. Okay, so that was just a brief intro about Elizabeth Betsy Braddock, but now let's take you into a deeper dive into her origins. Sir James Braddock was a citizen of a different dimension called Otherworld. He was sent to Earth 616 by Merlin, yes, the original one, to basically have a child who would go on to become Captain Britain. Once he reached Britain, he started studying and became a well-distinguished scientist. James marries Lady Braddock, and together they have a child, Jamie. However, there were some issues with Jamie's genes that prevented him from being the superhero that Merlin wanted. About 10 years later, the Braddocks had two more children, the twins, Elizabeth and Brian. Betsy really looked up to her elder brother, Jamie, when she was young, probably due to his chaotic yet intriguing lifestyle as a race car driver. So, it's no surprise that she ended up being closer to Jamie than she was with Brian. When she got to her teen years, she left home for New York City in order to chase her dream of being a model. This is when her telepathic powers first manifested due to a traumatic experience she had. Clearly, something had happened when her powers were activated because she didn't have full control or even access to them as a young adult. For some reason, parts of her powers were still locked away. Once her parents passed away due to a blast caused by Mastermind, the malfunctioning computer, she began working as a charter pilot. After some time, we see that Brian had taken up the role of Captain Britain. It was somewhere during this time that she reached out to let Brian know that their older brother Jamie had been attacked and severely injured while he was testing one of his race cars in their own compound of the Braddock Manor back in Britain. The twins, on their flight over to Britain, were struck down using psychic powers. The perpetrator happened to be a certain Dr. Sign. Out of pure luck, the siblings survived the crash. However, Dr. Sign was not done yet, as he took control of Betsy's mind and made her attack and kill her own brother. Her brothers, however, managed to stop her. After this, Elizabeth was unknowingly taken into the Mortar Research Center and delivered directly into the hands of Dr. Sign agent, Dr. Ramsey. Once Brian beat Dr. Sign, Ramsey showed his true colors and revealed himself to be a Nazi agent of Red Skull. 
Ramsey took Betsy and Jamie hostage, but they were both freed when Captain Britain and Captain America both showed up to save the day. Soon after this, Elizabeth had a vision, where she dreamt of Brian being attacked by Lord Hawk, a crazy Hawk fanatic. This would be another sign of her psychic abilities as a mutant. Later, we see that Betsy had quit her career as a charter pilot and taken up modeling. This profession would gain her international fame, and her career would go on to skyrocket. As her telekinetic powers grew stronger, she managed to make contact with one strike Psy agent, leading to her being recruited by an agent Matthew. They would have some romantic inclination towards each other for some time. However, after some time, Betsy fell in love with Tom Lennox, another Psy agent. On the front, she maintained her modeling career as a cover while she worked behind the scenes for Strike. In this scenario, she was tasked with infiltrating the Hellfire Club. Her father used to be a member of this club, but irrespective, Tessa had tried to warn Betsy against this act. It was around this time that Betsy would be introduced to the X-Man Warren Worthington III, also at the Hellfire Club. While Brian was on his adventures in America and the other world, Betsy had lost track of him. He came back in time to save her from Slaymaster, who had been hired by the criminal Lord Vixen to cover up her takeover of Strike and Psy's assassination. Although they were forced to evacuate as Brian and his allies, Saturn and Special Executive engaged in combat with the hero-killing, extra-dimensional Psybiote, while the Fury, Betsy, Lennox, and Allison Double sought safety in Braddock Manor. Betsy and her companions hid out in London, while Mad Jim Jaspers, a crazy mutant reality warper, took over the nation. Lennox was killed by Jaspers' soldiers, and Betsy and Double were then taken prisoner. The two women wound up in a concentration camp until Captain Britain and the others helped to put an end to Jasper's rule. At the camp, Betsy met Victoria Bentley while recovering from being in mental touch with Lennox at the time of his death. Braddock learned from Victoria how to use the trauma that she had undergone to hone her psychic abilities, as well as how to heal from it. Exploring some of her major comic book story arcs, Betsy and the X-Men. In Switzerland, Betsy was able to perceive the world through the perspectives of others around her. Thanks to her telepathy, she was taken there by Mojo and Spiral, who held her hostage for over a year, while also providing her bionic eyes to replace her damaged ones. She was given the moniker Psylocke, and made the star of the television program Wild Ways, which was set in another dimension. Children were urged to contact a certain number to join the Wild Ways, and eventually, the new mutant got involved as well. Once Warlock and Cypher had successfully freed Betsy from Mojo's grip, they all went back to Westchester. Since she felt that she had been the victim for far too long, Betsy made the decision to remain at Xavier's school, so that she could learn how to control her talents. Oddly, Betsy's bionic eyes were still with her, returning her vision. Little did she know that Mojo could record all that she saw with the implanted eyes acting as cameras, broadcasting it as TV shows in the Mojoverse. Psylocke used her telepathy to learn over the next few days that Cypher was in love with her. Despite the fact that she shared his sentiments, she refrained from taking their connection any further because he was a minor. Betsy would get the opportunity to impress the X-Men during the Mutant Massacre story cycle. While the X-Men and New Mutants were away on missions, Sabretooth broke into the mansion. When Wolverine arrived to face off Sabretooth alone, Betsy kept the kids safe at the mansion and managed to survive long enough. Then, Betsy would probe Sabretooth's thoughts to learn his strategies. He won Wolverine's esteem for her bravery in putting her life in danger to draw Sabretooth away from the Xavier Institute and the injured inside. Mojo then tried to subjugate them to his servitude by regressing them to childhood and raising them from scratch when the X-Men achieved enormous success. The new mutants protected them from this fate. Betsy discovered the new purpose of her bionic eyes during this battle, but she made the decision to keep it a secret. After being killed by adversary during combat, Betsy was revived and transferred to Australia by Roma. Following this, Betsy made the decision to protect herself with armor. Later, Psylocke assumed control of the X-Men, after it was assumed that Storm was dead, and that numerous other X-Men, including Wolverine and Rogue, were missing. To Havoc's displeasure, he didn't trust Betsy, because of how easily she could tell what was on his mind. The Body Transfer Arc Betsy used the Siege Perilous, a tool received from Roma, Merlin's daughter, to send the X-Men through to avoid their demise, which she predicted in a precognitive vision. They would all start over with the Siege Perilous. On an island close to China, Betsy awoke without any memory. The Hand, a wicked ninja organization, discovered her. Matsuo Surayaba, the head of the Hand, wished to save the life of his brain-dead girlfriend, Quanin. He had Quanin and Betsy's soul switched at Spiral's body shop to conduct this. Spiral combined their ideas and physical characteristics in addition to changing their bodies. They had similar memories and possessed a potion of Psylocke's telepathic abilities. 
The Mandarin received Betsy to act as his assassin. Betsy learned how to concentrate her psychic energy and transform it into psychic knives while working as an assassin, changing her armor to a more exposed attire. She had to face Wolverine during her first task as Lady Mandarin. Psylocke found out who she really was and used her psychic knife to stab Wolverine in the head, which caused her to see his memories. Then, Psylocke renounced her position as Lady Mandarin and fled to Genosha with Wolverine and Jubilee. Psylocke, Wolverine, and Jubilee learned that Cameron Hodge had kidnapped the X-Men and the New Mutants in Genosha. They encountered havoc in Genosha and later vanquished Cameron Hodge to release the X-Men. After being set free, the X-Men returned to New York. Psylocke's allegiances were soon put to the test. The original five X-Men were attacked by Fenris and Matsuo. Not long after they came back to the squad, he utilized a post-hypnotic command to turn Betsy against the X-Men during the conflict. His entire crew was taken prisoner, but it was later discovered that she was merely pretending to be obedient. Psylocke had finally got her mind healed from the brainwashing she had experienced. Psylocke joined Cyclops' team after the X-Men divided into two teams. After a while, she began to flirt with him, and when Jean Grey caught on, the two began to argue. They were cut off when Betsy body-swapped Quanin, now identifying herself as Revanche, showing up at the Xavier Institute and pretending to be Psylocke. The X-Men had no choice but to let her stay, because they didn't know what to believe or who to trust. Revanche then admitted to Psylocke that Spiral was to blame for her acquiring the Legacy Virus. Soon after, Matsuo mercilessly executed Revanche. After she died, Betsy inherited all of her psychic abilities and the bits of herself, but she was still able to use Revanche's martial arts abilities. Matsuo, who received a little portion of Quanin's psychic abilities, also removed Quanin's fragmented memories and personality from Psylocke. After that, Jean Grey gave Betsy further telepathic training. Around then, Betsy also began dating Angel. Crimson Dawn We believe this to be one of her more well-known sagas. The premise of this story sees Sabretooth residing in the estate while pretending to have mental disabilities before attacking Boomer. Psylocke engages Sabretooth in combat in an effort to save Boomer. Sabretooth's brute strength was way too much for Psylocke. Despite the fact that she was now a skilled martial artist, she used her psychic knife to stab him in the skull in a last-ish effort to beat him. But because Wolverine had already stabbed him in the head, he had already lost some of his brain, making him immune to Psylocke's psychic attacks. Then, Sabretooth started beating Psylocke mercilessly until she was barely alive. Angel, Wolverine, and Doctor Strange headed in the Crimson Dawn to get a mystic healing potion in the effort to save her life. They discovered it and gave it to Psylocke, but it had an adverse effect. On Psylocke's left eye, it left a tattoo of a crimson dagger. She was now able to blend into the background and teleport. Her relationship with Angel suffered as a result of the tattoo's effect on her personality, which made her more aloof. The squad was shaken by her new ability abilities and icy demeanor. Even Quicksilver expressed concern that she could have trouble empathizing with others. While they were apart from the squad, Psylocke and Archangel ran into Maggot. Psylocke thought that he was bad, since she felt a dark presence inside of him, so she attacked him. Maggot immediately retaliated, but the two were able to overcome him. Psylocke is forced to transfer Maggot and herself to an unidentified area, because she wants to figure out what Maggot is. A living conundrum. They all get drawn inside the Antarctica Fortress, with Archangel and Maggot's techno-organic slugs. The crew is kidnapped and forced to take part in a sham trial for Gambit, where Gambit's involvement in the mutant massacre is made clear by Eric the Red, who is actually Magneto in disguise. When Kuragi, a demon, took control of the Crimson Dawn, he demanded payment for the healing solution that they had given to Psylocke. In order to make Psylocke his queen, he intended to corrupt her. Kuragi received a portion of Angel's essence in exchange for allowing Psylocke to be let free. The monster was then vanquished by the two of them after Psylocke was released from Kuragi. Following this incident, Angel and Psylocke left the X-Men. The Death and Resurrection Saga Psylocke gained strong telekinetic abilities as a consequence of her power set trade with Jean Grey, who in turn received telepathy from Psylocke. She returned to the X-Men to hone her new telekinetic skills after finding them difficult to control and was immediately drawn to Thunderbird, a new member. Archangel and Psylocke made attempts to salvage their fraying relationship, even going on a few solo adventures like battling the Twisted Sisters. But eventually, Archangel broke up with Psylocke, admitting their relationship had come to an end. Following their breakup, Psylocke joined Storm's X-Men team and began dating Thunderbird. In order to look for Destiny's journals, the new team departed from the Xavier Institute. At Braddock Manor, Megan called Psylocke to help Brian Braddock when he started having nightmares. Brian admitted to his sister that his trust in himself as Captain Britain had diminished. Before they could debate anything, they discovered through Captain UK that Roma had become insane and was endangering the other world. 
Psylocke was held captive by the Warpies she had formerly defended. The Braddocks quickly discovered who was responsible for the attack, the computer mastermind who used the Warpies to pose as Roma and take control of the Sword of Might and the Amulet of Power. As Mastermind was ignorant to Psylocke's new telekinetic abilities, she was able to escape. Brian ascended the throne of the Otherworld after defeating Mastermind. Storm's X-Men were apprehended in Valencia by the National Police. When Vargas unexpectedly appears with the intention of killing Rogue, Psylocke was cut off from the group that included Beast and Rogue. As the last person left, Psylocke engaged Vargas in a duel to defend her friends, but Vargas killed her by impaling her through the chest. Psylocke unexpectedly reappeared months later in the same location of her murder, but without the Crimson Dawn. To bring her back, Storm's X-Men were contacted. Her identity was verified after extensive testing. Prior to being assaulted by the Hawaka, the X-Men were initially weary of Psylocke's presence and kept her under check. Psylocke and X-23 collaborated to save the Savage Land crew. When Psylocke joined Storm's X-Men, she was reunited with her comrades in a new reality in which Colossus and Rachel Gray, two teammates who had been assumed to be killed, were still alive, while Jean Grey had passed away. Cyclops and Emma Frost now led the Xavier Institute. Psylocke became acquainted with her partner, Rachel Gray, after she also started seeing images on her brother, Jamie. When the Scarlet Witch changed everything in reality, Jamie's schemes came to fruition. Despite Grey and Psylocke's attempts to defend themselves, Jamie forced them into an altered world. There, Megan's sacrifice was close to a reality breach that Psylocke and Grey were led to believe posed a threat to all existence. Jamie stated that he had been responsible for Psylocke's resurrection because he needed help in fighting a group known as the Forsaken, confirming Psylocke's suspicions. They worshipped the ominous First Fallen, the Phoenix's antithesis. Psylocke was reconstructed by Jamie to be resistant to reality warping and forged into a weapon her brother needs to fight the First Fallen. Psylocke destroyed the Forsaken and the First Fallen, and Jamie's whereabouts remained unknown after he ostensibly gave his life to safely bring Psylocke home. X-Men Apocalypse shows her in an important supporting role. Psylocke was later abducted and coerced by the Viper into attacking Wolverine and Jubilee, along with many other women in Wolverine's life. Wolverine and Jubilee couldn't avoid Psylocke's psychic sleuthing and martial arts prowess, making her one of the group's greatest threats. Fortunately, the women were freed from Viper's control. Additionally, Psylocke, Archangel, and others tried to aid Wolverine after he was brainwashed by Apocalypse into the Death Persona. Betsy compelled herself to use Cerebro, despite the ability that the Shadow King would escape in order to assist in locating Wolverine. The Shadow King started to use Cerebro to entice Betsy into liberating him, but Warren utilized their mental link to stop her and save her from herself, promising to always be there to help her. Psylocke and Angel then assisted the X-Men in defeating Apocalypse and his minions. When Jean attempted to aid Psylocke in defeating the Shadow King, the two eventually switched abilities. As a result, Psylocke got telekinesis, and her telepathy was combined with Phoenix's. When Psylocke and Angel rejoined the X-Men, he was just a reserve member because of some personal issues, while she stayed on the active roster. She faced enemies like Neo and the Goth during her time back in the past. Strife and two Prime Sentinels under his command ambushed the group while they were taking a well-earned break. Strife unexpectedly lost to Betsy, and in his petty evil villain way, told Betsy that he would have his revenge for humiliating him as she did. The Twisted Sisters assaulted the two one night when they were having dinner with Warren. They had been paid by an unidentified person to pick them out and kill one of the two. They were vanquished by the couple, who believed that Warren was the intended victim. An unidentified telepath watched from afar and indicated that he was planning to kill Betsy. Never was the identity made public. He was, however, thought to be Strife. She took part in Maximum Security, an intergalactic program. Neil Shara and Betsy experienced some romantic friction almost immediately when he joined the team. Their attraction grew to the point that they didn't even bother to flirt behind Warren's back, which led to a breakup with Angel. What makes Psylocke a unique mutant? As we already know by now, Betsy Braddock is a strong mutant psychic who has developed a wide range of telepathic and telekinetic skills over the years. So now, let's discuss some of her powers and abilities that really make her stand out. She was endowed with the Captain Britain Empowering Mantle at various points of her life, in addition to being a psychic. Braddock has acquired strong mental abilities that let her communicate with, influence, and control the minds of other sentient beings over great distances. She frequently has a huge butterfly-like image over her face when she uses her telepathy. 
She typically employs her telepathy aggressively against adversaries. Braddock has had the power to telepathically control and manipulate the physical properties of matter ever since she and Jean Grey exchanged powers, giving her the ability to levitate and move objects and living things. She hasn't really demonstrated any interest in using any of these abilities in battle, despite the fact that she can fly and move items from a distance like other telekinetics can. Her telekinesis is said to be strong in the sense that she preferred to employ it to create energy weapons rather than more delicate objects. In order to be resistant to the multiversal being known as the First Fallen, Betsy Braddock underwent quantum alteration after being revived by her elder brother, Jamie. Her unique state of being rendered her impervious to similar empowered entities, as well as immune to many kinds of magic, telepathy, and changes in the space-time continuum. Given that she has been impacted by reality shapers such as Legion, Proteus, and X-Men, it appears that she has lost this resistance. Braddock had her initial advanced fighting instruction from Strike. She received continual training in battle as an X-Man from Wolverine and the other X-Men. She became an expert martial artist after exchanging bodies with Quanon and absorbing all of the lethal assassin's combat skills. Albeit, it is unknown which precise fighting style she has truly mastered. She must be knowledgeable in a variety of ninjutsu techniques, since technically she is a ninja. She may have worked for the hand as a ninja, and is known as one, but her fighting abilities and methods are far beyond those of the typical hand ninja, or the Crimson Dawn Undercloak. Her abilities are said to be on par with those of a Grandmaster Ninja. Braddock's talents in those areas have significantly increased as a result of the additional training that she's received from Sabretooth and Ogun as an exile. The use of ninja weaponry, stealth tactics, silent movement, infiltration, camouflage, escape and evasion, covert techniques, ninja espionage, and ninja acrobatics are all further skills which she excels in. Braddock has adopted new fighting techniques since claiming her original form, techniques more akin to those used in medieval combat. In a fight, Braddock uses her telepathic abilities to her advantage by, for example, reading her opponent's moves before they happen and using that information to launch a speedier counterattack. Additionally, she has the ability to telepathically hide herself from both normal people and anyone else with superhuman abilities. She can telepathically conjure illusions that will confuse and immobilize her adversaries as she battles them. Braddock has claimed that she would be less hesitant to kill foes if ever required. Conclusion. With that, we reach the end of today's video. Psylocke is really one of the most powerful psychic mutants out there. It's been an absolute pleasure digging in and making this video for you guys. We certainly hope you enjoyed, and if so, make sure to leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, have a good one and be safe.